In uh, this video, we will be um, using Wireshark to do uh, packet capture. Um, this is a completely default Debian installation with no special packages installed. Um, this is running in a virtual machine, so there might be some differences compared to actual hardware. But first things first, um, we need to install Wireshark. First thing to do is log in as root. And when you're logged in as root, you should do an uh, apt-get update to make sure that all packages are up to date. And then we'll do an apt-get install Wireshark. And we'll happily download packages. Should non-super users be able to capture packages? Um, this you can change later also, but this is very important. If you are not, uh, if you don't allow this, you must be root to run Wireshark and you will be unable to do it as the ordinary user. You, for most users, when you want to listen to actual communication on a wire, you really want to enable um, this option. Yes. And now it's installing its things. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is one of the things that where download and processing takes time depending on, you know, speed and uh, download bandwidth and such. We have now um, installed Wireshark. And um, just to show, we could, oh, we could um, do a DPG reconfigure of Wireshark and make us make it ask us again. Oh, come on. Oh, this ought to be edited out, huh? Okay. So if you do Wireshark common, you will be asked again. The thing is that in order to be able to do stuff as root, you will want to be part of the Wireshark group. So, uh, the user I'm gonna do this with is called uh, sysuser. So I'm gonna do group sysuser. And you will notice that he is member of a lot of groups, but not the one called Wireshark. So I'm doing the user mod dash a dash g Wireshark um, switch user. And now if we check again, yay, now we're part of the Wireshark group. Um, the trick is that if I just exit this now, I will, uh, if I exit now, uh, and I write groups, I'm not part of the Wireshark group, because we put people in groups whenever we uh, uh, log in. So I'm going to log out and log in again. Okay, um, logging out. Log out, log out user, all kinds of things, things are happening, yes. <coughs> okay, so now we should be part of the Wireshark group. And we are. So, um, just to verify, um, it's here. And you will see also uh, the uh, hardware interfaces, like say ETH0. And we don't have any traffic on ETH0 currently. Before we get to this part, um, I would like to quickly introduce the network we're on. It looks like this. It's a very simple one. Um, we have our router that um, 
connects us to the internet, we have actually got DHCP from this route also. So our machine is called dot one. The network is called nine one something, and the router is called dot one. A very simple network. And this guy is netting and giving us internet access. So we can refine this if we ask the system. So we are um, 168.1.2 on ETH0. And if we uh, check the route, we are using a, a for oh, we are you for the default um, gate. Uh, sorry, for the default route, we are using the dot one as gateway, and we are most likely able to ping it. Yes, no security there. Okay, so let's start Wireshark. and start listening on each eight zero. And nothing is happening. If this had been a Windows machine, you would have seen all kinds of um, data going back and forth. Let's try to ping google.com. Let's just send one ping request. And you see over here, suddenly some stuff appeared. Let's maximize this one. So we have that dot one dot two sent something to dot one dot one about google.com. We got something back. That's the DNS query and the reply. And then we reuse this IP address to send an ICMP package and echo request package. And then uh, shortly after we're getting a reply. And then, because this is a Linux machine, we are actually doing reverse DNS lookups on the. Um, we're doing reverse DNS lookups on the IP address where we got the reply, and that is called uh, whatever. And that would be the uh, thing you see here. So we are trying to ping Google. We are sending a DNS request that resolves to this. We are sending an ICMP package and it takes 32 milliseconds to get a reply. We get a reply from this IP address, which is the same we asked. And then when we ask what the host name of this IP address is, we get this. And then for some reason, we are getting a uh, app request five seconds later. My guess is it's the um, app timeout time. So just to mention that when you're doing pinging and arping and so on, you could um, make a filter on this. If we filter on ICMP, we need to click apply. You only see the ICMP packages. If we filter on ARP, we will be seeing the ARP request. If we filter on IP, we'll see the IP packages, which are everything except the ARP. This was a quick example of how to install and use Wireshark on a specific interface.